Hi, I'm Jen Miner from Thrive Health and Wellness, and I'm here today to talk to you about milk. Okay, conventional cow dairy milk basically is just very, very, very harmful to our health, but many people aren't aware. What was that commercial years ago? Milk, it does the body good? Well, I beg to differ. <laughs> Naturally, like lots of other things, modern dairy and milk products are a far cry from the dairy used by our ancestors. What we have now is a very highly processed food. You know, first we feed the cows food they weren't designed to eat. Then we shoot them up with hormones and now they need lots of antibiotics because they're eating and living in a way they weren't designed to. So they get sick a lot. And then after we do all that, we get a milk that is so dangerous to consume that we need to do things like pasteurizing and homogenizing the milk, which chemically alters the milk and it makes it very unsafe to consume. So what do these big words mean and why do they matter? Pasteurization is a process where the milk is partially heated, not boiled. And the intention is to kill all these bad microorganisms because the milk is now very contaminated. And when we do this, the casein, which is the protein in the milk, it's altered uh, and denatured, and it's rendered very difficult for the body to digest. In addition, we usually have these naturally occurring enzymes in the raw milk, which would help us to digest the milk, but these are damaged and destroyed in that process. Then we have homogenization, which is when the cream, the fat portion of the milk, and normally floats to the top, it's emulsified with the non-fat portion. So you don't get that separation now that you should, and it makes the fat in the milk now indigestible as well, okay? Even worse, it allows the enzyme xanthine oxidase in the cream, and it enters the bloodstream instead of being excreted as it normally would. When this enzyme enters the heart and the arteries, it damages cell membranes, it creates scar tissue, and then we start to get these cholesterol deposits that accumulate on the scarred areas, and it can clog the arteries. So these challenges, okay, of this product that we've been consuming over generations, the last century and a half about, um, have led to this gradual increase in sensitivities and dairy allergies. Then we have raw dairy products, you know, from farmers that you know, A2 cows, 100% grass fed, right? It eliminates these issues, but it's hard to get. Uh, another option is goat's dairy. That's a really good uh, alternative choice than conventional cow dairy. Uh, and so you have other options, okay? You've got coconut milks, you've got nut milks, all right? Uh, the problem with these coconut milks and nut milks that you get in the store, they have a lot of additives, okay? And we're going to talk about them a little bit more in a second. Um, and then there's camel milk. <laughs> the reason that I really love camel milk, okay, um, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to give you some reasons why you would love camel milk as well. But a great resource for camel milk is called Camel Crazy by Christina Adams. She talks about the animal in general, and she talks about the benefits of its milk, too. Camel milk's been used therapeutically for centuries in the Middle East and Asia, African cultures. Uh, these nomadic cultures, they've been known to survive on camel milk alone, okay? It is a nutrient-dense food, all right? In recent years, uh, camel milk has been the subject of lots and lots of scientific studies to start establishing some of these health benefits of its bioactive ingredients. So now there's a really good deal of scientific evidence that give us all of this information on the benefits of camel milk. You can find a lot of these studies on pubmed.gov, so check them out if you're really interested. The camels are such unique animals and their milk has some very unique health properties. So some of the things um, that it's been found to have is very high proportions of antibacterial um, and antiviral substances, okay, antioxidants, immune system boosters, and then there's nutrients like B vitamins and vitamin E, vitamin C, zinc, potassium, iron. Okay, we don't think of camel milk as having these things, okay? It is also a good source of calcium, selenium, omega-3 fatty acids. These are all really good nutrients, guys. So this would be uh, something that would not only be a good conventional cow milk alternative, but it's something that is also fueling you. It's also giving you a lot of return on your investment nutrition wise. Okay. So then there's the question of lactose intolerance. There are so many these days that are lactose intolerant. 
Camel milk is a particularly good milk for anyone who is lactose intolerant. I know genetically I am predisposed to a lactose intolerance uh, and uh, camel milk does contain some lactose. but It is a smaller amount of lactose than camel milk and it's very rare to have an allergic reaction to camel milk. In fact, camel milk has been considered the least allergenic milk after human milk. One of the reasons for that is that camel milk is virtually bioidentical to human colostrum. That's a big, big, big deal, okay? Where when you buy these commercial soy, nut milks, plant milk alternatives, like I said, there's so many additives. They have coragum, they have carrageenan, and it, these things are all used to, to, to thicken and to stabilize and to preserve the milk. Uh, but they lead to lots of other things. So for example, carrageenan is known to be extremely inflammatory and that's always a concern for almost everybody on this planet right now. Uh, some of them have added sugar. Uh, there's lots of added ingredients. So when you look at the ingredients list, you wanna see, let's say if it's a nut milk, you wanna see the nut, water, maybe some salt, okay? That's it. But those brands that make them that clean are very hard to find. So look for very good sources if you're gonna go that way. But making your own is always a good option. They're very simple to make. Coconut milk, simple. these are all very simple to make. But you don't get the nutrient density that you get with camel milk, okay? Now, all those ingredients, you know, all of those nutrient benefits that we talked about a second ago, you're not going to get that wide range in some of these other alternative milks, okay? They each have their own added benefit individually, but they don't have that broad of a range of a benefit, okay? So how do you drink it? <laughs> well, you can drink it cool or room temperature. That's the best way. I personally add it to my shakes. All right. Um, you want to do that more so than having it as a hot drink because heating it does destroy some of the enzymes and lessen the nutritional properties. So we want to keep as much of that intact as possible. Okay. So a lot of people will add chocolate to it, make it a chocolate milk drink. So it's a great option even for kids. I know my granddaughter drinks it, she loves it. So she just sucks it right down when we, when we get it to her. Uh, so with camel milk, <clears throat> it's 100% all natural dry camel milk. Now this is the Camelicious camel milk that I use, all right? It doesn't contain antibiotics, no hormones, it's GMO free, it's gluten free. And the camels at Camelicious Dairy are fed non-GMO plant-based diet. Their feed is regularly tested to make sure that it's free of herbicides, okay? So that's very, very, very important. Um, and, you know, there are companies out there that sell large bags of camel milk powder. And unfortunately, the moment that you open that large bag of camel milk powder, it's subject to oxidation and the nutritional benefits start to lessen after 24 to 48 hours, okay? So unless you're gonna consume very large quantities very, very fast, then uh, the single serve packets like how Camelicious comes would be the best, okay? Most people aren't drinking it every single day. My granddaughter drinks it every day, but most people aren't drinking it every single day. So the single serve packets uh, can be a great solution, all right? So um, each packet has optimal nutritional benefits and then the unopened packets are good for up to a year. So this is great. For shelf life, you don't have to worry about getting it out. Oh, it's no good. I got to go get more. <laughs> like when uh, some of these milk, milks go bad. So you know that every time you pull it out that you're going to get a good source of something very healthy, something very nutrient dense, and it's going to taste great too. So check it out.